Hey ho, what's going on? So I've recently graduated the PhD and during that time I've written a lot of code which is mostly garbage. But I thought we'd go through my GitHub and I'll show you the most exciting and useless things I've ever written. So if you're on my GitHub, you're gonna find a bunch of things, including video related materials, such as like the clip music video. You can make your own music video right here. Uh, be my weasel, be my pig. Which you should watch if you haven't. Uh, there's the Minecraft Neural Network. I provide you with the Minecraft world. If you haven't watched that video, please do it. GPU stat, which is a tracker for GPU machines and sending it to a server and then displaying it. This is what our lab uses for seeing who uses which GPUs, which is, you know, fairly useful. I think this is the single most popular thing I've written during my PhD because that's people actually use it, so. <laughs> There is the Flatland repository, so Flatland is something we did some time ago and then I was a total slug and completely failed in supervising the project. Uh, let's not talk about this. You'll also find code for our conference submissions, of course, but then we get into the real stuff. S-Run is a little tool that you can use. What it does is it simply copies directory to a server via SSH, it then runs a script on that server and then it copies back a directory called logs. That's pretty easy and I use that all the time. It's very good if you have a bunch of code in a folder and the output is a directory called logs, you're good to go. Otherwise, you'll have to change this a bit. Okay, at that point I had no clue that you could use tempdir to make temporary directories. Oh god, <laughs> look at this. So it happened too many times that I didn't do this from the directory where I actually had my code, but from the from the home directory. So it synced my entire home directory to the server. So I just... No! See, this counts as UX. No, I'm pretty sure it does. And this right here, this is the crown jewel. RAT. It is a system that manages my experiments. So in RAT there is a bunch of things in here. There is a worker and what the worker would do is it would sit on a server and it would listen to a database for new experiments that it should run. And if so, it, it would pull the code from a MongoDB. So so the, the queue is, an, is, a, is a Redis queue, and it would pull code from a MongoDB, and then it would run that code, but it would only do so if the GPU is free. So I had to change this RQ thing in order to check whether or not the GPU is free. You can see right here, there's a check of whether or not the GPU is already occupied. And if it is occupied, it would just not do the task and put it back into the queue. However, if it is not occupied, it would run. So the neat thing you can do with this thing is if a lab mate of yours is running on a GPU, you just put this worker on the same GPU. And then as soon as their job is done, it's like, boom, you got it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But for the most part, it actually prevents you from interfering with other people. You know, that's pretty neat. And your jobs won't fail just because there's already something on the GPU. So the core of this thing is you can run an experiment config, which means you can upload different hyperparameters and then jobs would be generated according to those hyperparameters. And I even built in a hyperparameter optimizer so you can give ranges and it would search through them either in grid search or in random sampling. So here you have a search strategy and I built in so much stuff. You can merge experiments. I mean, look at this. This is uh, this is quite a bit of engineering going into here. It even has a tensor board thing. Whenever a job is finished running, the worker would actually put it back into the database. And this command right here will get me all the event files from TensorBoard and then it would actually label the directories with the names of the hyperparameters so you actually see directly in the run name which run has which hyperparameters. This is so freaking useful because usually TensorBoard runs are just like run one, run two or, or the date or some stupid thing. <laughs> Confirm, really? <laughs> 
<laughs> no. I, I I built this in to prevent myself from doing stupid stuff, but I also built like an override flag. You know, like there's delete all. So as I said, this is, it probably doesn't work anymore because I know the Redis queue dependencies have shifted and so on. Yeah, if you want, if you want some inspiration, uh, feel free, feel absolutely free <laughs> to clone this. I don't want it anymore. Like uh, when I started uh, systems like weights and biases and so on, they just didn't exist. So I had to run my own. Similarly, yplot is my attempt at writing a plotting library uh, that works with tensor board uh, events. And uh, so extracting data from tensor board events, this is all so useless right now, except this uh, smoothing thing that I got from SciPy, which was pretty useful. Then YPAC is, you, you can tell my name, I'm, I'm very innovative with my names. I think that's just a set of uh, routines that I implemented for uh, working with Torch and TensorFlow. Again, this is probably all useless. Ooh, there's DeepFool, look at that. Most of this is completely useless now because these things are mostly in the libraries themselves. ConfProd is what I use, oh, look at that. This is a part of RAT, actually. This is what generates a products of configurations. That's why, yeah. <laughs> I even wrote a readme. I wrote a readme, a small utility library to generate cross products of experiment configurations. Just look at the unit test and hopefully it should become clear how it works. <laughs> Let's do it. I don't think so. I mean, look at that. This is beautiful. Look, you can like, spec out something like this you can see like so there is you want SGD optimization and these are the different step sizes and you can sample and this seems like a good a good uh, thing I mean there, there are probably 50 libraries today that do that much better than than I ever could fountain oh fountain was my own data set library like C for 10 it would it would download it from a server and it would extract it if it's not there. Yes, this all exists now in Torch Vision and for the ML for NLP in Hugging Face. What a useless thing. This thing right here, I think... So in TensorFlow 1, if you youngsters remember that, it was quite a bit harder to save and restore and do anything like this. So this would be a library that if your checkpoint doesn't quite fit, it would restore whatever is there. And I think it would also, if the shapes don't fit, it would do like a random projection to make the shapes fit. And if they don't fit, yeah, this you, you had to implement like a graph operation just to get the restore to work. This is a plugin I wrote for Chrome because I was annoyed that I couldn't cite an archive article from the article itself. So I wrote a plugin that goes to Google Scholar and scrapes the uh, the, the Google Scholar BibTeX entry in directly to lot to archive. It doesn't work anymore, but uh, I think there are other plugins now. These are actually good. This is a continuous compiler. As you can see, it's not very uh, sophisticated. <laughs> And of course, I did write my own archive scraper. There was still a time when I read all of archive. This is it's not possible anymore, but I did read all of archive for at least certain lists. So I had, I had many more than these lists. New papers every morning, and I would just read through the abstracts in the train. And those are <laughs> repositories from my masters. And so this is the first public repository ever from the pattern recognition class in my bachelor studies. What is here? Linear kernel, polykernel, RBF. This looks like support vector machines, right? Did I implement this? Here is an SVM classifier <laughs> implemented. Yikes. <laughs> and this, who, who does that? Who does private methods with a dunder? No, that's reserved. Whoever did this passed me. No, nonlinear SVM without any sort of automatic backpropagation. No, no, stop. Yeah, but this is a this is a a support vector machine without without SGD. 
I think we used to calculate support vector machines with sort of a quadratic programming. I think that we got that from somewhere. In any case, this was my very, very first public commit to GitHub. And it was already a machine learning uh, lecture. So I guess I had this coming for a while. If you are uh, interested in useless Git repositories, <laughs> check out my GitHub. I'd be happy to see what your GitHubs look like. So this was more of a nostalgia thing, but I hope uh, you still had a bit of fun. Cheers.